New Age man, the magic man in the house, Don yeah. Madge. Um, geez, bro, I don't even really know where to start. There's so much to talk about. Um, obviously, it was it was the UFC debut that that we were all hoping for. I'm sure uh, it was the debut that you, that you were hoping for. Kind of, I don't think you could have written a better script if you tried. Like, mm -mm. oh man, it's like you can see goosebumps <laughs> as I'm talking about it. It was it was such a crazy thing to see. Like a lot of people, you know, unfortunately always get, you know, like a lot of guys are, he's, he's going to get murked there. He's going to do well there. Let's wait and see what he does there. But I, like a lot of guys in the know kind of knew that, that, that this was going to happen. That yeah. This was the final step, you know. Just, we want to start on, I know everyone will obviously have a lot of questions about the UFC, what it was like, and I'm sure you've answered the questions a hundred times, but like just kind of guide us through the whole process, man, what it was like from, from, from signing to going there. I mean, obviously you fought in, in, in Moncton. I don't even think yeah. Canadians know where that yeah. is. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's the first time in my entire fighting career, I'm talking like ever, yeah. that I felt like I was a professional athlete. Sure. That I was like there for a job and I was treated as such. Um, you know, from the, from the moment that I signed the fight, um, not just the contract, the, the fight, you know, everything was, okay, here's your schedule, here's what we need to do, here's what you what you need to send us, these are all the, inf all the info we need. Um, then obviously when we got there, it was just like clockwork, you know, you're given a schedule, this is what time you're going to get picked up, this is what time you're going to do interviews, this is what time you're going to do everything, and everything just runs perfectly like that. I didn't have to, I didn't have to think about a thing, I didn't have to stress about a thing. If I needed something, I just contacted one of the staff, they do it for me. Um, so like me and my team, we, we, we didn't have to do anything except focus on the fights. And, and I think like that, usually when I fight, when I used to fight here, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with a thousand different things. You know, I'm, f I'm thinking about the fight, then I've got to deal with like sorting out tickets for this one and that one and doing that. And then, oh, something went wrong and I have to go sort it out. No one, there wasn't anyone taking care of me as the athlete, you sure. know. And uh, I think that was like the greatest, the biggest thing that I noticed, um, in terms of the UFC, like you, you re it, you really feel like you're there doing a job. Fantastic, yeah. man. Yeah, th this is one of the things we were actually talking about. Um, actually, with I, th I think it was with Martin the other day, talking about having, you know, like obviously he, he, his wife helps him out, like sorting out tickets for people and stuff. But not everybody has that. Like a lot of guys, you have to worry about, like you say, a thousand different things. You know what I mean? And like you've got so many things on your mind as it is to, to, to deal with as a fighter, yeah. you know what I mean? There's so many things going on. There's so many, like, opportunities for your mind to break, uh -huh. you know what I mean, in, in the lead-up to something like that. Um, and, and what was it like, uh, besides obviously that being looked after by the UFC, being there, realizing that your dream is, is right on the doorstep now, you know, you, you're going to make that walk for the UFC. What, what was that all like? Well, you know, like, I, um, it, none of it really sort of hit me until... Um, on fight night, we all got into the bus. We drove off to the to the event, and um, I like wanted to go and just like fill out the cage. And you know, I got into the I got into the octagon, and um, I like moved around and just like felt it, and I like, looked up at the stadium, and I was just like, that's when I was like, wow, okay, we've made it here. And, they, and that actually got me like even more psyched and more pumped for the fight. Um, and then when I started, when I walked out like walking out and like everyone's just like so pumped about it and like the fans are going sure. like ballistic and you, as I walk out I just like felt like this is where I've been waiting to be like this is this is where this is where it's at you know like yeah, I'm, sure. I'm I haven't I haven't I haven't felt this energy in it since like my debut you know and, and I um yeah it, it felt really good you know it felt really really good I felt like I was home I felt like I was supposed to, I was supposed to be there this whole time Cool. Yeah. It, was, it was quite a funny thing because like I'm, I'm I'm quite big on on watching walkouts. I think you can get a lot of details from fighters, uh, and and I always like to hear. Obviously, you know, you know, I'm sure the commentators sit there with like their their, their background, yeah. <laughs> their like details and stuff. And it was so funny to hear what they were saying, because obviously, like they didn't really know much about you. You know what I mean? They were talking about this tie boxer, this tie boxer, this tie boxer. And I remember Dan Hardy like freaking out as you were like throwing submissions off your back. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And it was such a, like a, I think it kind of took me by surprise to to think that guys of the UFC standard would 
not do as much research which was which was strange for me in a way but it was also cool in a way you know yeah, what i mean because yeah. like all of a sudden like we couldn't see their faces we could hear what they were saying but i, I would imagine their jaws were starting to drop you yeah know what i mean here's this guy from somewhere in africa who's supposedly a tie boxer throwing up submissions off his back <laughs> and just like, you know what i mean it you know like <laughs> I, I i guess like it's it's kind of shocking to think that at that level that yeah you know you, you don't I mean, a lot of guys don't, you know, like, but for, for me personally, if, if you're going to go fight at the Premier League, it's like going to go play Premier League football, but you don't know how to dribble or pass. Mm. Like, even if you're a defender, you should know how to dribble and pass the ball and, and be able to shoot, you know, like, you yeah. should be able to play the game. You specify and you're specifically good in one one uh, aspect, but it doesn't mean you don't know how to play the game sure. to its to its utmost, you know. And uh, I think, like, that's, <coughs> that's, like, one of the things that... Um, I've taken upon myself like ever since I started MMA was to to be the best at everything. You know, I, d I don't want to just be like, okay, I'm good at this one thing, so I'm just gonna stick to that. So I'm, I'm I want to be the best in everything. I want to be able to grapple with the best grapplers. I want to be able to strike with the best strikers. I want to be able to out wrestle wrestlers. You know, like it's just that's just the way I've always been, and um, I guess it's just because I'm ultra competitive. So I don't want anyone to be able to beat me in any aspect. That's that's quite a strange thing for me, and it made me think in that moment when, when Dan Hardy was talking about your tar boxing. Everyone often talks about, you know, the, the, the Thailand experience, fighting in Thailand being the first Western sponsored by Tiger Muay Thai. But no one really talks about your jiu-jitsu. Like, I mean, you're a, you're a brown belt, a very high-level brown belt, and it's like seems to be something that doesn't get discussed quite enough. So, so just talk me th through, like, w when did you actually start jiu-jitsu? Um, I know we've spoken about it before briefly, but I just wanted to kind of get, w w when, was, when did the journey really start in jiu-jitsu? So the the first time I like had ever rolled or anything like that was in 2010. Um, I was at Tiger Muay Thai. I was sponsored there, and on Saturdays the guys would have open mats. So I would go and like um, just fuck around, really, like just go out and 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 see like how I could hang, you know, and um, entered like a few grappling comps that side, and um, you know I was winning, so. I was like, okay, well, I can, I can clearly do this, you know. And then when <laughs> obviously, obviously, when I got back to South Africa, Muay Thai wasn't an option anymore, um, and MMA was just like all over the, all over the show. And uh, most of the guys that I trained with, like in my, in my like team, um, were all MMA guys. So I was like, okay, well, let me, let me just give this a try. So I would say I properly committed to Jiu Jitsu and MMA in 2011. Um, so that's what eight years, eight years of jujitsu. I, I mean, I've been I've been a brown belt for almost four years now. Sure. Three, four years at the end of this year. So, you know, I got I graded pretty quickly, but I was also grappling a lot, winning a lot of a lot of things. And um, you know, I, I I always I always tell people this because when I when when I first started MMA, all I did was do jujitsu, jujitsu, jujitsu and wrestling. Like that's all I did. I didn't um, I didn't focus any of my like my striking. Obviously, I would spar and I would maybe like hit pads or whatever, but um, I'd do jujitsu three times a day, and sometimes I'd have a fourth session with wrestling. So <laughs> that's all I would do until I was a purple belt, and then once I became a purple belt, then I started doing, and also I only trained in the gi. I never did no gi. Hmm. I would only do no gi if I was sparring. Um, so then once I became purple belt, then I was like, okay, now I'm gonna start like focusing on the all aspects of my game, not just the, the jujitsu side. And you know, like I, I, I feel like, I feel like right now I'm, 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 qu I'm quite a high level grappler. You know, I, I believe that, uh, you know, I can hang with with most guys. You know, I've travelled overseas. I've rolled with like some of the best guys in the world, including like Charles Cobrinha. Um, I mean, Ruben Charles. Um, you know, I can hang, I can hang with the best guys in the world. So, it's, it's kind of like it's, it's a nice thing to have in my back pocket. You know, it's always, it's always something that I can, I can rely on if, if, if you know, you know shit it's the fan i gotta get a guy to the ground or he takes me down and I've, I've gotta i've gotta do my thing you know um the goal always is to knock guys out like that's always <laughs> the goal um if i can grab a neck and put someone to sleep like that's that's also great cool it was like obviously in in, in the build-up i was kind of like listening to what what the american side was saying with tay edwards and the general consensus that it was 
like a like going to be a walkover for him. I think he yeah. felt that as well. You know, I think he kind of said that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? He felt like, you know, he would have an advantage on the ground or his power would be too much. And and I think he he found out very quickly he was he was in trouble. You know what yeah. I mean? And it was quite funny because it l- it looked like he was broken quite early. Like, th- did you feel that? W- like, uh, and obviously the armbar was on. He props to him for getting out of that. Yeah. I thought that was long gone. I, I thought, thought that arm was, was going to break. break yeah, yeah it, it looked like yeah, mm-hmm. he was gone. But from that moment, he, like his whole demeanor changed. He was kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm well, really you, in a fight here. You know what the thing is, like, uh, f- coming from a striking background and all, all, all the experience I've had striking, I, I can tell when someone's a legitimate threat on the feet or when someone just is athletic and has power. Mm. He's just that, he, he, he wasn't, he wasn't a tech, technical striker. So I knew if I took him into like a dog fight, he wasn't going to be able to stay there. And, and as you could see in the fight, the first punch I landed on his chin, he sat down. Yeah. Because I might not be as athle- athletic as him, but I know how to strike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think that's actually what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to take the fight to him, show him that, that I was there to, to do business and uh, let him feel my power. Because there's a difference between someone that knows how to hit from, from experience and a guy who can hit because he's athletic. Sure. And when you get hit by a guy that knows how to hit... <laughs> You sit down, you know, like, it's just the, uh, it's, it's just like, le- it's like when you roll with someone that's athletic and doesn't know anything, or you roll with someone that's not athletic, but then yeah. like know every single little thing. Sure. It's, it's a, it's a huge difference. Um, and I think, I think that did break him, you know, I think he realized once, once he got dropped by me and then on the ground, he almost got submitted by me. I think he kind of thought to himself, where am I going to take this fight? Yeah. You know, and, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wasn't. I wasn't interested in trying to scramble up to my feet. I wasn't interested in trying to like get back up because I knew I could beat him on the ground too. You know, if he, if he wanted to stay and play in my guard, I'm gonna submit him for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was very confident going into the fight in all aspects of of the fight. Yeah, man, it was. Geez. It was so like obviously here. Yeah, I don't think we got to see in the EFC. We got to see bursts. I think in the Dave Mazzani fight, we got to see a lot of your arsenal, but not all of it. Mm. And I think. Like I felt in that moment at the UFC that the the what can we say the pressure of the UFC or the the step up to the UFC really brought the best out in you. Like it really said, okay, I'm here now, I belong here, and and like it was almost like the artistry really came out in you. You, yeah. you got to display everything in your arsenal, and it was quite cool. I think it was like the perfect debut because you got to show the ground ability. Um, Maybe not as much wrestling ability, yeah. but the, the, the striking, the, the grappling was all there. And, and we got to see a full package of Don Madge. And I think it was, like I say, you couldn't have written the script any better because people that didn't know you, <coughs> even the guys that did know you, got to see so much of your game. Not only what we have seen before, but but how you've improved yeah. and how you've grown as, an, as, as a martial artist. Which was, like, I think that was what I took away the most out of all of that was like, we... We really got this opportunity to see the best of Don Madge. Not let me not say the best, yeah. but we got to see the full package of what you're capable of, which was, which was such an awesome thing. And I think that was the biggest thing about all of that. The head kick KO was awesome. Getting the bonus on your on your debut is, is obviously awesome. But I think going forward, like everyone, everyone knows who you are now because of the head kick. Yeah. But they also know what you're capable of, which 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 makes things interesting now. All the guys like like McManod and Sean Shelby, we're looking. Okay, look, now we know who Don Madge is, and yeah. now we can start to look at where he belongs. Well, you know, like I've always been that guy. The bigger the occasion, the bigger the performance, and um, you know, it never gets bigger than the UFC. So sure. every every fight's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, and I think I'm just gonna perform more and more as as the fights grow. You know. Um, I knew going in, T was a threat. I knew he was a, a t- like a prospect that everyone had their eyes on. So n- I, I put the pressure on myself. I, I wasn't really worried about any other pressure. I was the pressure I put is on always on myself. And I was like, I want to go there and I want to not just win, but I want to perform. I want to show guys, like like you say, exactly who I am. You know, um, I'm not I'm not the guy that goes out and fights for points. I'm not the guy that goes out and tries to squeak out a decision. I'm there to like finish fights. And if you look at my record, all of my wins are finishes. I yeah. only finish guys. Um, and I wanted I wanted to be that guy when I when I go into the UFC. I wanted to go out there and I wanted to finish. Either I'm gonna finish or I'm gonna go out on my shield. You know, but there's no ways that you're gonna outwork me and there's no ways that you're gonna out point me. It's not gonna happen. We're gonna fight to the death. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Damn straight. <laughs> See, it, it will be eaten. Eh? Exactly. 
So obviously now, like, um, I think it was today, we started to see the talk between you and Stevie Ray. Mm -hmm. Talk us through, is, 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 that's obviously a fight that you want. It seems that he's quite interested. Is, is that what, you, what you're trying to work on now? Yeah, you know, the, the fight got, like, sort of suggested um, for UFC London, uh, which, was on the, which is on the 16th of March. But um, I was still traveling at, at that time. I was only going to be back at the end of January, so I wasn't going to have enough time to prepare. Um, and then he actually had to have surgery on his knee, so he couldn't even perform. And, you know, we, we spoke to each other on social media about it. Uh, he's a very cool guy. Um, I've got no, like, ill feelings towards him. Um, we spoke about it on social media saying, like, that it's a great matchup. Like, we should make it happen. So I thought today, you know what, I'm just going to put it out there and see if he responds. And, you know, he <laughs> did. Uh, I, I knew he would, too. I know he's that type of guy. So... Um, I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. You know, we're looking at June first in uh, Sweden. So hopefully, you know, hopefully his management, uh, Sean Shelby, all the other guys, they they want to make that fight happen too. I mean, they wanted to make it happen in London. They might as well make it happen in, uh, in Sweden. In Sweden, you know? yeah. I think there's actually a, a Glasgow card as well um, later on. So maybe even on that card, you know, I don't mind going to his home country to go whoop his ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, that's and th that's the thing. Like, like with you, I, I know from the time you 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 said that that you were going to be moving to the UFC, you you, sa you stated to me, like you said to me, like I want the toughest fights they can give me. Like you want the biggest, the best fights. You don't want to. I mean, who who was it? Someone was throwing shade, <laughs> saying that you know Tay Edwards was also just making his debut, which I think is like a bit of a bit of an unfair statement to make because. He he was the American, you know. Obviously, the, he had these crazy 30, 40 second KOs. Like he he was the favorite in the fight. Yeah. Realistically, that's the way it, it was seen. And I mean, like it it's different making your debut from here and making your debut from there. If that makes sense, yeah, you know what I mean. Like day. it's yeah, it's, 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 it's completely different. I mean, you've got to travel. You know, you've got to do the harder work. You know what I mean? Th these guys would have had even just to get into the yeah, UFC was hard exactly, work. Exactly. I too like it was not easy to get into the UFC sure. whereas he fought like seven fights against n no one really going to the contender series knocked the guards and then got signed yeah so I'm not saying that it's an easy easy route but it definitely wasn't my route yeah and uh as far as like people thought you know the thing is people are always going to talk shit it's just it's part of the game MMA is like the most fickle game <laughs> in the most fickle sports in the world <laughs> because I have a good performance. I beat the shit out of someone. I'm the best guy in the world. Everyone's like, oh, you're the champ. You should be the next champ, whatever, whatever. You lose, you're the shittest fighter in the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if T had knocked me out in the first round, yeah. they'd be like, T Edwards is the <laughs> fucking man. He's, he's, he's going to be the, he's going to be the next champ, you know, like sure. he's the man. Don ain't shit, like whatever. Like yeah. that's exactly what would have happened. Now I knock him out. Now all of a sudden everyone's, uh, I'm the best in the world. I'm the, <laughs> I'm Don Madge for the UFC lightweight title. Like, you know, um, but then you'll still get the idiots that are like, oh, well, Tia was actually his uh, debutante. Yeah. And, and then he lost his second fight to Dennis Bermudez, who was like a veteran of the yeah. UFC. He was in the top five of the featherweight division for years. And guys still throw shade on him. It's <laughs> like, dude, come on. He's fighting like one of the best guys in the <laughs> UFC. It's not like he was fighting a bum. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that, that's the sport, you know. And, and, and it's, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship because when you do win, everyone's on you. <laughs> everyone's just like, yeah, you're the best. <laughs> Then when you lose, the other side comes. So there's pros and cons. Yeah, absolutely, there's man. Pros it, and cons. It is like that, and it's so it's such a weird one to to see to see guys getting thrown shade at like that. You know what I mean? Like I'm like cool. Like I guess I get what you're saying, but at the same time, like I don't think guys understand. Like if if, if you're in the US and, and and you're training out of a big camp, like the, the road is right there. It's just mm -hmm. like you take a short drive and you're there. You know what I mean? From here, okay, hopefully w with everything that's happening, we, we, we're going to see that change. You know what I mean? A lot of guys are going to start to get recognition. And, I th and a lot of that has to do, l look, I know a lot of guys will argue with me when I say that, that you have a massive role to play in, in, in what's happening now with the UFC and that. I'm sure there's a lot of other factors involved as well. But it was, it's like, it's like that catalyst, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. It was kind of like a, a validation to say, look, guys went before you. They didn't have the, the, the best running in the UFC. But also we can understand that times were very different. You know, the, the knowledge was different. The camps were different. Everything was different, you know what I mean? And I think everybody's learned from that. But I feel like it was always going to take that one breakthrough fight to say, okay, 
you know, there, there is something happening yeah. there in, 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 in Africa and in South Africa. Obviously, since we've seen we've seen this surge of African MMA all of a sudden, you know, and look, the, the, with all due respect, those guys are not fighting out of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not born and raised from here. Yeah. So the difference is with you that it's, I mean, Francis Ngannou, okay, he's taken a hard road to get where he is. Yeah. Kamara Usman's also taken a hard road, but he's he's been shaped in the States, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's a little bit different. Whereas y- you've you've been homegrown here, you know. You know, I mean? you know what the thing is that I always, I always, I always see that, and, and like one hundred percent, those guys are representing Africa. But if you if you if you listen to Usman's talk, he's an American. He sounds sure. like an American to me. When you hear Ngannou speak, he sounds like a Frenchman to me. Yeah. When you hear uh, Style Bender talk, he sounds like an Aussie to me. Yeah. When you hear me talk, I sound like a South African <laughs> because I'm a South African. I've lived here, and you know. When I, when I went into that fight, I wanted to be the guy that was going to break it through for South African MMA. I wanted to carry my flag on my back, and I wanted everyone to, to look at South Africans and be like, never mind Africans, South Africans, because I'm a South African. Mm. Um, I wanted guys to look at South African MMA and be like, wow, these are the guys that we need to look out for, you know, and, and be able to bring the other guys that, are, that no one even knows about uh, into the light, you know, so, th- so that they can see that we have real talent here and... Uh, you know, I always I always think about guys like um, that were before me, not necessarily in MMA, but if you think about guys like Brian Mitchell, um, he had to go alone mm. to the States to go and build his name there. He couldn't get recognized in his own country. You know, I'm trying to change that. Yeah. I'm trying to change that for athletes so I don't have to leave the country to go and make a name for myself. Mm. I don't have to move to America to become, n- like, n- you know, yeah, known yeah, yeah, in the sport. Sure. I'm trying to bring the attention to South Africa so that south africans can get the attention that we deserve for for our for our sport you know because we've got guys that are working really really hard and guys that are giving up years of their life of their youth to chase this dream yeah. and no one knows about it and we don't get the recognition that that we deserve um so you know it's it's bigger than just me fighting in the ufc it's it's about bringing my my nation into the into the into the world view you know yeah. guys guys think Guys were thinking that South African MMA, like, you know, when I was going to go fight T, you know, oh, he's a South African, it's a joke. <laughs> but it's not a joke. Come here and you'll, s- y- you know, s- see some of the guys that I train with. Yeah. Like, there's, n- there's no joke. There's <laughs> no joke on those mats. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I, I'm, j- I'm trying to change the, the view that we have here in South Africa. You know, um, we, we embrace all other sports like rugby and soccer and cricket. You know, we embrace those those guys and we make... We make celebrities and heroes out of our out of those athletes. Why not for MMA? Mm. We're putting everything on the line every single time we go to fight. Yeah, this is this is a big thing. Do you think that that like does that fuel you or does it add pressure to you? Like um, carrying carrying the hopes of a nation. This is this is one thing. Like like I was saying in an interview, I was saying, you know, Don went over with the hopes of a nation on his back. You know what I mean? Maybe not. Um, Maybe not the everyday people, but the MMA community. You know what I mean? Like it's the reality is like <coughs> whether guys were, were were negative, positive, in between about about you in the EFC uh, in the UFC. Everybody that was paying attention was hoping for the best. Well, that, you that's know, that's the reality of the situation. The th- the way I think of um, fighting is that fighting is the every man's sport. It is because every single person in their life has had to fight for something everyone so if you don't recognize that in fighting then maybe you've had a very very nice cushy life (laughs) but anyone that's had to struggle for anything or fight for anything which is most of our our nation Mm. everyone in this country fights and works hard for something whether it's for money to to feed themselves or whether it's to support their family or whatever everyone fights for something and if you don't recognize that in this sport that we're just kids trying to fight for something that we believe in that we that we've spent our, our youth you know training for um whereas you know other sports you could just be born with talent you yeah. could just be por- <laughs> born with hand-eye coordination you know it's one of those things fighting is literally one of those sports that you have to put loads of time and time and time you're gonna have ups and downs you're gonna have positives and negatives it's just it's you know it's the it's the it's the greatest sort of mirroring to life <laughs> no it is man i don't think like Obviously, with with um, the the whole new setup with Supersport and 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 you know with you going over and now all of a sudden we've got this 
like uh, attention on South African and African MMA, a lot of people will look at the sport and not really understand what's yeah. going on. They don't yeah. understand the 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 level of commitment that it takes, the the amount of hours work. I always try and say to people, they're like, like, what is your obsession with MMA? And like, it, it's so hard for me to explain to someone that doesn't understand. But what I always try and say is, m my obsession is not necessarily the sport. I love the sport. I love the artistry of the sport. But my biggest thing with MMA is is trying to understand what an athlete is going through to actually try and put yourself in a situation to to look i can't imagine it like i like i mean i'd get on the mat with you guys once in a day and I, every time i get up i'm like how in the fuck are these guys doing this three sessions a day six days a week it it it. i don't think you can actually comprehend it unless you're really doing it and yeah. and and the level of commitment, the, the fitness, the endurance, the power, the speed, all of these factors that are that are put into a cage and then two guys have to test which one's the better. You know what I mean? Like I don't quite think like casual fans understand what's going on. They love to see the the, the, the benefits of the work, mm -hmm. the KOs, mm -hmm. the submissions, the decisions. But it's there's so much more to it, man. And it's like you say, like it's it's young guys that are, are literally like I mean you, you're not going out and partying with your mates no. all night. You know what I mean? Like, there's none of that. That, no. that sort of youthfulness is kind of given up to, to, to chase that. Well, like, my, 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 I mean, my youth, I was spent living in Thailand and fighting. That, that you know, from 15 to 21, that's what I was fighting <laughs> Muay Thai. I wasn't out partying. I wasn't out uh, spending time with, like, friends. I was yeah. all alone doing what I needed to do. Um, when when guys were in uh, in matric and going to like parties and stuff like that on the weekends, I was training or I was training for a fight or I was cutting weight or I was doing something. You know, <laughs> I, was, I was I was always doing this, <laughs> and it's the same now. You know, I I don't live a normal life like everyone else that's worried about. Oh, I can't wait for the weekend so I can go and fucking have a, a beer with my mates. Yeah. Like, I'm not thinking about that because Saturday is still a work day to <laughs> me, and Sunday I got to still work because I need to recover for Monday. Yeah, so. My my life isn't a normal life, you know, but I still want normal things. I still want things that everyone else has in life, sure. like a home, a family, you know, peace in my life. I, I, everyone wants that. And that's what I think a lot of people don't understand is that we're just, like I said, we're just people that are trying to chase a dream. And and if if, if more people could sort of see that, and like you say, and understand like what, what we put ourselves through every single day just to get into a cage mm. and fight <laughs> another human being, well, you're not even guaranteed to win. Yeah. You're not even guaranteed to win. You're not even guaranteed that all that training is going to gonna pay off. You could go out there and get starched in 20 seconds, and then that's it. You've <laughs> spent another three months of your life or two months of your life to get knocked out. Sure. And Man, then everyone wants to shit on you on social media, <laughs> but they don't know like how hard you've like grinded. Imagine every single day you worked in an office every time you fucked up. <laughs> It was put on social media. Every single time you <laughs> fucked up, you you forgot to send out a mail. You forgot to do yeah. this. It was put on social media. Oh, you're a fucking idiot. Yo, you're a dumbass. Johnny, you you're the worst fucking job. emailer ever. You're so shit. People kill themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's 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 how I see this. You know, and just because we're in the public eye, people think they can say whatever they want. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's a funny thing. It's it's like when you drive in a car and a guy's in his car and he'll he'll shout at you, but if you in a line at at a shop and you bumped someone, they don't say shit. Because <laughs> now you've got someone in front of you, you know, it's a different story. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time still before guys recognize us as real athletes yeah. and, um, you know, recognize the hard work that we do put in. But I think we're on the right track, you know, um, having the super sport deal now and doing things like this, you know, mm -hmm. where, where, where people, especially like what you're doing, bringing light to MMA, um, letting people see that, you know, we're just, like I said, we're just, yeah. we're just people. We're just people that have a dream and we're chasing something sure. and we're working hard every day for it. Sure, man. Like that's, that's one thing I always think about and, and it brings a question to me, Don. Like you, you spoke about how much you've given up, um, the sacrifices you've had to make, you know, being in Thailand as a youngster, giving up those youthful years. If, if you look back now, <clears throat> obviously you, you had this dream of, 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 of reaching the highest highs in the sport f from a young age considering everything that you've been through i mean like obviously the, the journey's only really just begun but considering everything you've been through like 
I sh- we could probably sit here for for 27 days and not <laughs> cover everything but like considering everything you've been to h- how does it feel to to finally kick down that door of the ufc to go from a 15 year old in thailand to 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 being in the ufc now w- w- what is that like for you you know i i try not to f- i really try not to like focus on myself and like my ego i i really try not to um so i just i just look at like every little thing as like a new chapter so Muay Thai was one chapter, I closed that, I went into MMA, I closed that chapter locally, and now I'm on to a new chapter. So instead of, I don't, everything that I've done before mm. is done. I've closed all those chapters. I don't, I don't try and like think about like, oh, but I was a world champion in this, I was did this, and I've, I've fought that guy, I've only lost four times. Uh, you know, like, I don't try and think, think of that, because that's done, you know, that, that sure. part of me is done. Even, even my fights locally, that, all that stuff's done. It's a whole new chapter, and uh you know, obviously, I, I, I have I have all the memories and all the experiences and stuff, and and I have all the lessons that I've learned throughout this um, this career of mine. Um, but I've have still got a long way to go. <laughs> I've still got many years to fight. You know, I, I I've been doing this since I was fourteen. You know, started training for real like when I was fourteen, and uh, you know, I plan to keep going until I'm like well into my thirties. My thirty uh, thirty five is my 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 cutoff age. So. Um, yeah, it's a good twenty-year career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's that um, interesting career for twenty yeah. years. But I mean, like you look at guys like Diego Sanchez, it's definitely possible. Yeah, 100%. he's still doing the damn thing. Man, he's been in the UFC forever. It's crazy. <laughs> Nate Diaz too. Like yeah. those guys have been in the UFC forever, and they're still doing it. I think Diego Sanchez won the Ultimate Fighter season one. Yeah, or season. No, I think it's season season one, one right? <laughs> damn, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> still out there beating the He's young there, life. Man. What He's an animal, there. bro. It's crazy. Absolute man. animal. Bro, the next thing I wanted to do was, um, I think it, it, it'll be quite a nice perspective being out of the EFC to look into it. Obviously, it's um, the the first card of the year coming up. Uh, I just wanted to kind of like run through the fights, kind of kind of hear your thoughts on it. There's obviously a couple of fights like we, we, we don't really know too much. Uh, like... Uh, we start with Justin Smith, Gordon Redman. You're a guy who knows Justin Smith a little bit well. Yes. I, I believe he was training with you guys for some time. Um, to me, from the outside, he looks like, like like the real deal. He looks like a good prospect. He, I mean, he is. I um, you know I trained him th- in his amateur career, got him two amateur titles, um, got him into the EFC, training for that fight. Obviously, it's difficult because I'm I live in Joburg, so sure. I'd have to like schedule his training and whatever from Joburg and make sure that everything's going on. Um, so like I like for me I completely understood understand why he went and he had to go change camps because sure. like I mean I was there too yeah. where I didn't have enough and I had to leave and go somewhere else so I completely get it and I told him that from like the beginning you know like if I can't do something for you move on bro like you yeah. gotta do your thing um, you know as long as he keeps he keeps his work ethic and he keeps his his head on his shoulders you know that that dude I said it when he had his first EFC fight I said this dude's gonna be a world champion um, and I still believe that if he keeps in the same direction you know a lot of guys like i said you can feed your ego a lot and um get lost in that and um i just hope that that doesn't happen for him and i hope he's got the right people around him that aren't just yes men that's saying you're the best you're the greatest you're the man you're the man and he has someone that's going to tell him straight like this is what you need to work on this is what you need to do and he has like real guidance um if he has that man i don't see a lot of guys beating him i think he's going to be a problem for most guys yeah man he just seems like he without the puns like he, he just seems he has a different kind of power in that weight division that <laughs> guys just yeah. don't have the answer for he does man that we 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 were saying that for long when he was training with us you know he he can touch guys and just mm. you feel like you feel it you know I, i've sparred with him a couple of times um I, sp- I mean i sparred with him a lot but uh you know the kid has power man yeah. he's a powerful powerful kid um so, but like i said as long as he as long as he knows how to like you know, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as he's working on all areas of his game and he's making sure that he understands where his weaknesses are and where sure. he needs to work on, I, th- I believe that he'll he'll definitely hold that EFC title. Yeah, man. Fantastic. He's, he's definitely a kid to watch out for. I, I yeah. saw it from his first fight. In, uh, I think he fought in Cape Town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was impressive, man. Yeah. He just, he's just like one of those guys who just seemed like he belonged there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, he, he had arrived. You know, I mean, he's very experienced. Like he's had a lot of yeah. K- uh, K1 experience. Yeah, he was. He's had a lot of K1 fights. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a good, <laughs> seems like a good kid, man. And yeah. uh, I, honestly, I wish him all the best. I think he's definitely going to be one for the future. The other one I want to speak to about is, I mean, you, uh, guy you know really well. You've worked with quite a bit. Eleni Lunga finally mm-hmm. back in the mix. Obviously, we don't know too much about his opponent. He's, from what I understand, he, he's here on a good word from from Joe Cummins. He's obviously got a got a decent background. Don't know too much about the guy, but I guess. Uh, when you're dealing with Elaine Lunga, I don't think too much really matters about Dude, what let me you, tell you something. You like, people that don't know about Elaine, the dude is, he's the real deal. Like, he is the real deal. If, um, you know, he's my main sparring partner. Sure. So when I'm prepping for fights, that's the dude that, uh, that I work with yeah. because he's a guy that can give me a good push on the feet. He's, he's impossible to take down. <laughs> he's so difficult to take down. His wrestling is really, really high standard. Yeah, this is, this is the part, so that, like, you know, obviously, I'm I'm in a bit of a privileged position because I get to train with you guys. <laughs> the other day, the, the first time for me ever like spending any time on the ground with Elaine, I was shocked. I was yeah. honestly, I was shocked. The things he was doing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like you you get sucked into that because you like see he's spinning back kick KOs, and we talk about his kicks and stuff like that, and you you never really mention again his ground game. His ground game is intense, man. Man, it's, he's, and he's, he's a problem. Yeah, he's, he's a problem he's, anywhere anywhere yeah. you fight him. He's a problem. Um, you know, there's a reason he's waited a year and a half <laughs> to get a fight. Guys don't want to fight. Yeah, it's yeah. not, a, you know, Gavin Hughes was offered a fight with yeah. him. He was like, fuck that. I'm not fighting <laughs> that, dude. You know, like, uh, I get it. I, I the, if, if guys just came in and just watched him spar like one day, You'd be like, holy shit, who's this guy? You know, and, uh, and that's exactly what I was saying about my point, you know. If if guys could just understand the kind of talent that we have, mm. not necessarily just in my team, I mean, especially in my team, yeah. but all over South Africa and Africa, you, you, man, there's some guys you don't even know about that, that, that'll put your lights out. Yeah, 100%. And I think, I think Elaine's one of those. He's like, he's almost like a... The EFC's best kept secret in yeah. a way. He's he's so dangerous, man. And, and like you say, I feel so bad for him. Like he's been he's been out of action for so long, and it's hard to see. And, and you know, like I spoke to him briefly, and I was like, you know, because I, I thought about it. I'm like, you know, Elaine is a guy who 100 percent can go to the UFC yes, without a doubt. 100%. He 100 percent can go there. And I think it's like even for myself, like you forget about him because he's inactive. You know, what yeah. I mean? it's not his fault. I know he's out there looking for it. Oaks don't want Oaks don't want to line up for him. You know, what I mean? like uh, there's, you know there's just nobody taking. You know, that and fight. like. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. Like, also, y- you got a guy that has like one of the best knockouts ever mm. in the EFC, like ever, hands down, and uh, he's just not getting like any good offers. Like, yeah, yeah you'll get offered a fight, but then it's for, like no money. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's like if, you, and that's a lot of the reason why a lot of guys are leaving the EFC and trying to find other fights, and um, it's because you're not taking care of your athletes. Mm. You need to take care of your athletes. I mean, me personally, <laughs> dude, I don't even want to get, I don't want to do a rant, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> dude, I, 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 f- I feel like I, I was completely um, sidebarred, you know? Um, yeah, I got a little bit of, a little bit of support and stuff when I got signed and got a little bit of support when I did my fight, but you know, we got other guys getting press conferences. <laughs> <laughs> other dudes getting press conferences meeting all the guys at, the, at super sport meeting all the guys uh from the the ufc local guys you know i didn't get any of that yeah. i didn't get any of that in fact they were trying to force me into taking a fight with gavin hughes so that i didn't sign the contract with ufc <laughs> so like you know it's it's you know you, you're gonna reap what you sow and uh i, I feel like you're gonna lose really good athletes really good fighters guys that, that that are super talented because you don't want to treat them right you know and it's 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 again it's a, it's a thing about the sport you know the sport needs to have more attention brought onto it so that people can see that we are legitimate athletes it's also it's, it, there's another note on there it's 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 understanding and realizing star power i yes, think exactly if, if the ufc <laughs> you know like so many guys are like how can this guy be fighting on the main card how does this work cm punk because they understand the power of star power 100%. you know what i'm saying why do you think guys Rock like Lesnar. yeah exactly why do you think guys like like aaron chambers yeah in in bellator have such a they have big drawing power they have star power of it doesn't course. matter what he does in the fight you know what i'm saying like yeah we, we we're so far behind in understanding star power like it was so strange to watch 
your career like that? Because obviously yeah. we, here was this kid who was s- s- sparking guys. Okay, obviously everyone's like, oh, you know, we got to talk about Leon Maynard. I'm yeah, like, dude, yeah. listen, Don Madge was was a kid at yeah. that point. You know what I mean? Like, let's let it go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. let's let it go. Let's also talk about that that kid almost hit probably one of the toughest guy in organizations history, almost out of the cage. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, nobody speaks about that. And like guys like Elaine Lunga, the star power, this African powerhouse yeah. of MMA. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like. A lot of star power is neglected. There's so many guys that are like that that are just like, you know, and and I like I I understand, but at the same time, you got you got to play to the to the guy's strengths, you know. Like, yeah. why why is Elaine getting interviewed in English? Interview him in French. <laughs> the guy speaks French. Sure. Interview him in French. Put subtitles. Yeah. yeah. Easy. He will sound a lot better. You'll be way more marketable because he's speaking his native tongue. If if you ask me to go f- to Congo and I must <laughs> go do an interview there, I'm gonna look like an absolute moron. I'm not gonna be yeah, a marketable at all because, you know, it's like that saying. You know, if you judge a fish by how well it can uh, climb a tree, it's gonna always be an idiot. <laughs> but you, you, you're not marketing the guys in the correct way. You know, Elaine is this savage, savage dude, and he's an intelligent guy. But you 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 can't market him. You can't market him to the South African crowd because you're trying to make the guy speak in, a, in his like fourth language yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> sure so of course he's not going to be as marketable as as he could be um it's 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 yeah there, there's a few things that need to be done right if you look at the ufc if a guy fights from china and he can't speak english what do they do he's all his interviews are yeah. done in uh in chinese sure and you give him subtitles or a translator easy simple as that and, th- and then you can actually get the character of the guy properly instead of just judging him on how well he can speak english or how <laughs> well he can like you know converse yeah and i see it with like a lot of the afrikaans athletes as well guys that it's not their first language let them speak afrikaans give them subtitles it's a it's a it's one of our 11 languages yeah you know yeah absolutely <laughs> man it, it's it's a serious valid point like i think a lot of guys don't don't get those opportunities to really express himself you know and that's a big thing especially for a guy like elaine man yeah he <laughs> and you know like we, we, when you when when the year starts, you're like, who do you guys want to see? The first name that comes mm-hmm. tumbling through is always Elaine Longa. Where's yeah. Elaine Longa? Yeah. And hopefully uh, that gets realized. I, th- I think there's a lot of things coming his way now. Obviously, if, if everything goes his way here, um, you know, you know, Martin's obviously got uh, dreams of of, mm-hmm. of competing overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he he's looking to wrap up that title. Le- le- let's just let's just finish up there with Martin. What, what do you think? How how do you see Martin? He's he's a guy who's been around, seen it, done it all, but but still growing every day. Like he's he's inspiring. He's like super super inspiring to me. Like he just at his yeah. age, still every day, willing <laughs> to learn, get down on the mats, work the hardest. You know, Martin's thirty six years old. Yeah, he does more sessions than some <laughs> of our twenty two year olds. <laughs> Freak. It it's it's inspiring. Yeah. He, 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 like. To a guy like me, you know, he's a guy I look to, look up mm. to. You know, like it's, you know, even though my 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 career I'm in the UFC or whatever, but I still look up to yeah. him because if I can be like that when I'm 36 years old, I I feel like I'm I've made it. You know what I mean? That sure. guy hangs with all of us, me and Lane, JP, Chad. He's in there with all of us, and we're like we're we're a lot younger than the the guy. And man, he's got the touch of death <laughs> in that right hand. And I think if um, you know, if Joe gets smart. He's gonna get slept really quick, and everyone's the same thing. Everyone forgets about Martin's jujitsu. Martin's jujitsu is mm. good. Guys don't guys don't understand. When you hit the ground with him, it's not it's not a picnic there yeah. either. Um, and I think I think, you know, Joe is uh, kind of looking past Martin. It's gonna be a big mistake, you know. I I believe personally that Martin won the fight with Dave Mazzani. Yeah, I, I was on that. I was on that side of the fence myself. I, 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 I feel <laughs> like even though Dave got a lot of the takedowns and he had like a lot of top position and stuff like that, if you look at damage and you mm. look at the new scoring system, Martin yeah. pieced his ass yeah. up. Like he he rocked him a few times. Dave's face was messed up after the fight. Martin never scratch. Mm. It's um, he was attacking submissions. He almost he almost had a, a submission locked in. Um, I think it was a, an anaconda choke or a dash choke, but uh, you know, guys, guys sleep on his uh, his grappling ability, and they they only think, oh, he's just a knockout artist. No, yeah, that yeah. dude can get you anywhere. So, w- what did you say if you had to just spitball off the top of your head, uh, Martin Fasol and Vistro Cummins? How how do you see that ending? Um, 
you know, I'm 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 assuming that uh, Joe has some sort of game plan to to tackle Martin. Um, but the w- the way I see it, see it happening is Martin touching him, Joe falling, Martin finishing him on the ground, either TK or submission. Yeah. I mean that that's that's just my my opinion. Uh, Joe's he's slick, but he's not as slick as he thinks he thinks he is on the feet. Um, and you know, like I said, Martin's the guy. If you make a mistake and he touches you the touch of death so um <laughs> i think i think you know he only needs to land one so w- once he lands that one i think it's going to be the beginning of the end for joe awesome man yeah yeah it's a it's an exciting fight yeah, uh, i is. had a long chat with martin about it. i think a lot of guys look past um look past the abilities of of joe cummins as well and i think yeah. martin as well but uh joe's looked good all his all his all his outings here in the mm-hmm. UFC, he's looked really good. Uh, I think it's a great one for Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he spoke about um, the possibilities of the UFC mm-hmm. if he can get that title back. So it's so it's a hell of high water fight for him, which which makes it even more exciting. Yeah. You know, uh, understanding the risk and the rewards for him, like a, a last throw of the dice kind of thing for him. You know, um, yeah, man, and I just think he's he's one of those guys who who, who just deserves it. You know what I mean? He, he really does, man. Yeah. Like he he he's a pioneer. He's mm. a pioneer of South African MMA. Uh, he's been around before any of us even thought of him. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure. and um, you know, if 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 there's anyone that deserves titles and recognition, it's it's him. Like uh, I believe that 100. percent So I'm, you know, I've always rooted for Martin, and um, he's my teammate, and I'll be there rooting for him in two weeks. 100% man that's going to be a massive exciting fight UFC 77 just before you go Don I, I, if, if somehow people still don't know uh, Cyborg Seminar that's the yes. 16th of March at Apex um, how can people get in touch with you if, if they want to get on that seminar um, so you guys can contact me through any of my social platforms just at Don Madge MMA Facebook Twitter Instagram um, we only have about 15 spots available left. Okay. Um, it's 800 Rand for the seminar. It's from 10, 10 a.m. to 12 uh, p.m. on the 16th of March. And yeah, I'm actually, I'm fetching her from the airport on Saturday. So she's going to be, she's going to be in town, you know, she's going to be training with us and, and, and the team for that whole week and um, the weeks after the seminar. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting. You know, if you guys want to come and, and meet an actual legend of the sport, yeah. like not, Oh, legend! An actual legend of the sport, um, you know. Yeah, probably, probably the greatest female athlete to easily, ever do that. Easily, easily. And this is this is what I want to want to reiterate. It's not like um, <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that I think a lot of people aren't realizing. Whether you're you're a fighter, an enthusiast, an amateur, a pro, um, I, w- I would encourage anybody who's who's interested. I mean, I I, I don't. I grapple a bit here and there, but I, I will be there because I understand right. the importance that it's and, and once in a lifetime. So, so definitely get up. Just there. on that note, um, we we are quite strict with 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 entries and stuff. Um, if if you are on pain to be there, you're not going to be allowed in. So sure. it's 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 just it's just the way it is. You know, we've got we've got literally, like I said, we've got a legend, we've got a superstar of the sport. Yeah. Kind of every Tom, Dick, and Harry come in there to try and take photos and stuff. No, so absolutely. guys, if you want to get there, we've got 15 spots left contact me don't yeah. match mma at gmail.com you can send me emails otherwise <laughs> you're gonna be that barry boohoo in the corner crying that's if you it, ever yeah. did it <laughs> that's it exactly exactly 100 bro thank you so much for your time man thank you uh w- obviously we, we wish you all the best hopefully that stevie ray fight gets signed up yeah, wherever yeah. it is sweden glasgow we we, we ain't scared we're we not scared. see that happen man. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be a cracking fight because quite funny because everyone some people for some reason keep insisting that they want to see you versus danny henry in the ufc i don't know where or why that comes from there's a difference of weight division yeah. firstly and like why would we want to see that uh, it no, confuses okay. me but it's okay St- i'll Steve. take his part yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Part. No, we'll, we'll get it sorted out that way 100 <laughs> man thank you so much for your time man, and we'll you, chat man. to you soon thank you brother and thank we're you. out ciao oh that was cool man thank you yeah, cheers guys fucking gone he's not having any